Hi, I'm Dr. Bardia Anvar from Skilled Physicians Group. Today we'll be going over coronavirus education, otherwise known as COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2. The date of this recording is April 4th, 2020. I want to specifically note that all slides have references beneath them and all our education about this disease is changing on a daily basis. So some of the information here may become outdated and to constantly stay updated on the Please stay constantly updated on this disease and watch further videos. Thank you. So I'd first like to thank all of the physicians in our own physicians group who are making the ultimate sacrifice, seeing patients who are highly infectious with the disease COVID-19. Thank you for all that you do in making the ultimate sacrifice. Shout out to all of you. I'd also like to make a big shout out to all the other people that are taking care of patients today who are diagnosed with this disease or suspected to be diagnosed with this disease. I'd like to uh, thank all of the uh, nurses out there for all your hard work taking care of patients, CNAs, administrators, janitorial staff, delivery people, food service people, all support staff, pharmaceutical, pharmacy staff, and everybody else who is helping out in this very uh, critical time for patient care. So coronaviruses are a large group or broad category of viruses. There are several different types of them. The word coronavirus comes from the Latin corona, which means crown, and these viruses have a crown shape. Coronaviruses can cause both mild to very severe diseases in both uh, people and they are also found in uh, animals. Uh, most commonly we find that the disease that we get from coronaviruses are actually the common cold. They circulate among animals including pigs, camels, bats, and cats, and we have seen other animals that they circulate in as well. Sometimes these viruses jump from humans, excuse me, they jump from animals to humans and that's called a spillover event and then a disease is caused like it has in this uh, COVID-19 coronavirus crisis. Coronaviruses, the mild viruses are 229E, OC43, NL63, and HKU1. SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, emerged in late 2002 and disappeared by 2004. More on that in a few more slides. MERS, or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, emerged in 2012 and it remains in circulation and actually in camels and has infected people over time. COVID-19, which emerged in December of 2019 from China, um, is, is now basically infecting the whole, the whole globe or all over the world. And it, is known, and it is known to be caused by the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2. So it is a relative of the SARS virus itself. <clears throat> On February 11th, 2020, the World Health Organization announced an official name for the disease that is causing the 2019 novel coronavirus outbreak, first identified in Wuhan, China. The name of this disease is Coronavirus Disease 2019, abbreviated as COVID-19. Uh, uh, the COVID-19 actually stands for, the CO stands for Corona, the VI stands for virus, and the D stands for disease. And of course, the disease came out in 2019, and therefore, we refer to it as COVID-19. Um, formerly, it was referred to as the 2019 novel coronavirus, or 2019 uh, NCOV. SARS, Taking a step back, when SARS emerged from China back in 2002, it swept across the globe, largely through air travel, causing deadly illness. More than 8,000 people were infected and 774 patients died. Numbers of COVID-19 surpassed that in within two months. So COVID-19 is much more infectious and we know that it has a latency period in many individuals where they do not exhibit symptoms. However, they are infectious and they can give the virus to others. And that has help the virus spread pretty rapidly throughout the world. Uh, the disease SARS disappeared in 2004, likely due to isolation and quarantine containment measures, and no cases of SARS have been reported since. MERS, Middle East Respiratory uh, Syndrome, in 2012, a new coronavirus emerged in the Middle East, causing an illness similar to SARS. Again, researchers at the NIAID um, and across the globe initiated studies to examine this disease and research efforts uh, from both outbreaks of SARS and MERS uh, have 
advanced vaccine uh, research and uh, have prepared scientists to quickly assess COVID-19 today and look at are there any possible cures or vaccines for this disease. SARS-CoV-2, or what we now call COVID-19, uh, has been genomically analyzed. And that has been done partly by support from the NIH and other groups throughout the world. A study in the journal Nature uh, Medicine from Scripps Research Institute and Tulane University and other colleagues used sophisticated bioinformatic tools to compare publicly available genomic data uh, from several coronaviruses and specifically looking at COVID-19 to see how it originated. The genomic data of the new coronavirus responsible for COVID-19 showed that its spike protein, those proteins that we see make up the top of the crown shape appearance in the circumference of this virus, uh, have some unique adaptations. One of these adaptations provides special ability for this coronavirus to bind to a specific protein on human cells called angiotensin converting enzyme 2, ACE2, a related coronavirus that causes severe acute respiratory syndrome in humans also binds ACE2. So SARS and COVID-19 both bind ACE2, which is important to know. Existing computer models predicted that the new coronavirus would not bind to ACE2 as well as the SARS virus. So we did not expect this virus to have such an affinity for ACE2. However, it was found that this virus actually binds in a separate area of the ACE2 uh, site and it binds more tightly and it is uh, can get into the cells more easily. Um, and uh, it, it, it found a previously unidentified binding site. And uh, this is strong evidence that the new virus was not the product of a man-made or a lab-made virus. However, it probably developed in an animal. And in fact, any bioengineer would not be able to discover this. This is something that is found to be more natural for those people who believe, oh, or have this conspiracy that maybe this was created in a lab. It, is, it has not been found to be so, and it is most likely found in nature. So we've all heard the story. The bat gave it to a pangolin. The pangolin gave it to a human. Um, Exactly how that occurred is not clear, but the looking at the backbone of the new coronavirus, the reason why we know that it probably came from a pangolin, which is looks like a small scaled anteater, uh, an anteater with scales, <clears throat> is that the special binding of this coronavirus or COVID-19 to the um, ACE2 re receptor resembles how it would bind within this animal. And that's why we believe that it came from this animal. And um, that that's basically how we believe it began. Now, how does the virus actually get into our cells? Of course, uh, the virus is spread, as we all know, via aerosolized transmission. It also remains in surfaces. It has to get into your respiratory tract or your airways. And then once it does so, the virus itself will look for a cell to bind to. And as we talked about the ACE2 receptor site, here we see the, the virus itself has bound to the ACE2 receptor site, which is usually found on an alveolar cell within the respiratory system. Now, this binding uh, of this uh, virus to the receptor, we're not exactly sure how the virus actually gets into the um the actual cell, but somehow it either gets phagocytose or, or gets in, and then it uses the cells of our body to replicate or grow and multiply its RNA or its uh, blueprints, uh, as you would call it, and the virus grows. And then as the virus grows within the cell, the cell either bursts or the viruses leave and they infect other cells. And the virus multiplies within the body. And it's not exactly clear when people will show symptoms from the time that the virus has infected the cells, but we do know that the virus has a latency period. So it gets within the cells, it re replicates, and our body does not know that. So a lot of, there's still a lot of unknowns with this virus, but we're learning more each day. And here is the DNA structure of the virus itself that we see, um, or the nucleic acid structure of the virus here. So transmission, as we have all said, and we're gonna talk about this more in the later uh, video series, 
But transmission of this virus is usually through respiratory droplets. It can come from speech, people talking to each other. It can come from coughing. It can come from sneezing. It can come from any way respiratory droplets leave the respiratory system and attack another human being. So the virus is highly infectious, and that's why so many of the protocols and prevention strategies and the mitigation strategies have been advised now uh, to keep this virus from spreading. Uh, and of course, remember, a lot of individuals can have no symptoms, researchers have found, but they may be carriers of the virus, or the virus could be within their cells, or it could be in the respiratory tract, and they're shedding it out. And that's very important to remember. Now, our immune response. Basically, an immune response is when a foreign uh, pathogen, virus, bacteria gets in our body, our body responds to it in a certain way. Sometimes our body is very successful in eliminating pathogens, and sometimes it's not. In this virus, of course, we have a lot of questions. Some people get really sick. Some people may have little to no symptoms. And so what happens when this virus gets into the cell itself? Well, we have what's called an immune response, and the immune response is both B cells and T cells. And these cells will go and look at the virus itself, the, the, the uh, structure of the uh, nucleic acid or the RNA of the virus, pieces of it, and then they will develop what are known as antibodies, and they will attack both the cells that are infected and destroy them, but also destroy the virus itself and eat this all up. This is great for individuals who uh, can mount a rapid immune response. For individuals who can't, individuals with diabetes or have a slow immune response, then the virus continues to grow while our body has what's called a cytokine reaction. Cytokines cause patients to have fevers and everything else. And sometimes what we have is a heavy cytokine flare, a cytokine attack on the body. And this is the secondary attack of what happens in this virus is the cytokine response, which actually causes the severity of the disease in individuals who later phases will need ventilator or me mechanical ventilator support um, is the cytokine attack on the body. So um, some individuals, like we said, have no symptoms or have very minimal symptoms. That depends on the H HLA haplotypes uh, of individuals. Some individuals will be able to develop antibodies to the virus quickly and eliminate it, and some individuals won't. And it has to do with basically our genetic system. And so uh, if you have that and if you can get over the virus quickly, well, then that's fantastic. And now we have individuals who have overcome the virus donating their plasma to help other individuals because they were able to make those antibodies quickly and fight the virus. So what happens in the early phase of the virus, it's fantastic if you have a good immune response and you're able to eliminate the virus and all of your cells within your lungs will stay healthy. In the latter phase, as the virus has replicated and really gotten to a lot of cells within the lung system, this is a later phase of the virus, then your um, then what's happening is, is that your immune response is actually attacking your cells in your body and destroying them and actually making the situation worse. And that is when we begin to see the inflammation and what we call the severe respiratory distress syndrome or the adult respiratory distress adult respiratory syndrome, where we see that there is a lot of fluid buildup in the lungs, a lot of difficulty breathing, and this is the dangerous phase of the virus. So initially, what we want is a good immune response. Secondarily, sometimes as physicians, then we will look to blunt the immune response, reduce the immune response so that the body can properly uh, not destroy its own cells. Well, uh, I thank you for watching the first part of this video series. I look forward to uh, seeing you in our further ones. Thank you.